This is the first in a new mini series of videos brought to you in partnership with Dive Right, focusing on ocean conditions for scuba diving. In each video in this series, we're gonna take one aspect of ocean diving, be that current, waves, temperature and visibility and break it down looking at the oceanography behind what causes that particular condition and then I'm going to share with you my pro level advice from a lifetime of diving all over this planet for how you can better your diving in coping with different conditions. Each video in this series is really aimed at beginner divers or anyone that's new to diving in the open ocean and in this part one we're going to be focused on currents. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, it is so great to see all of your smiling faces out there. And we are back with yet another different series of videos on the topic of scuba diving, this time brought to you in partnership with Dive Right. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that we've partnered with Dive Right before, and I couldn't be happier than to be partnering with them again because we share the same goals, and that's to help make you guys safer, better scuba divers. So if you feel like saying thank you to us for putting content out there, the best thing you can do is head to Dive Right's social channels, all of which are linked in the description of this video below. Show them some love, let them know that Divers Ready sent you, and yeah, consider their offerings the next time you're looking to upgrade your gear because they make equipment for serious divers. And I know all of you guys, if you're watching this video, you wanna be better divers, so I know you're serious divers. I know it, I know it in here. In this video, we're gonna be looking at what causes ocean currents, the different types of ocean current that are out there and which ones particularly affect divers. And then we're gonna be looking at how to determine when you rock up to a dive site, if there are currents in the water, top to bottom. And then we're gonna be looking at what techniques you can apply to make sure you stay safe when diving in currents and also some specialist equipment that you can use. We've got a lot to get through. Let's dive straight into it. Ocean currents are caused by an ever-shifting combination of wind, tides, uh, the Earth's rotation, and changes in density, salinity, temperature, and so forth. And if you add to that the undulating and uneven profile of the ocean floor, you would expect that currents would be really hard to predict and ever-changeable, but that's not really the case. Generally, we talk about currents fitting into one of three categories based on their position in the water column. At the deepest parts of the ocean, you have deep ocean currents, which is the coldest, densest layer of water that run along the sea bed. Sitting on top of those, you have mid-water currents, which are basically the thermocline that sit above the coldest level of water. And then the top 400 meters of water is generally referred to as surface currents. And it's the surface currents which are warmed by the sun and driven by the wind and often affected by changes in salinity due to the influx of fresh water from rain and river systems that most concern us as scuba divers. Obviously top 400 meters of water, that's plenty deep for the vast, vast majority of divers. These currents, these rivers, for lack of a better term, that run through the ocean and crisscross the oceans are also responsible for the distribution of temperature, salinity, and nutrients on which all life in the ocean is based. They're also responsible for creating some really weird climate anomalies. For example, the Pacific coast of Peru. The Pacific coast of Peru has a cold, temperate climate. If you drew a line of latitude across Peru to the Atlantic coast, of South America. You're going to be in Brazil, it's going to be palm trees and tropical water and beaches, whereas Peru's quite a cold coastline. It's very, very temperate, and that's because of the Humboldt current that's drawing cold water all the way up the Chilean coast, all the way up the Pacific coast of South America, and feeding Ecuador, Peru, the Galapagos with nutrient-rich colder water coming up from Antarctica. Also the Gulf Stream, that's a very famous current, starts in the Gulf of Mexico, winds its way around the hook of Florida, crosses the Atlantic, and basically the first patch of land it hits is my home county of Cornwall in England, which is why that warm water conveyor belt allows Cornwall to grow palm trees. Yeah, I know, palm trees growing in Southwest England. Who'd have thought it? Cornwall has about the same latitude as Vancouver, Canada. 
Certain dive hotspots around the world are notorious for having really strong currents. I'm thinking, top of my head, the uh, channel between Cozumel and Cancun in Mexico, that's always got reliably strong current. Where I did my dive master in Indonesia, you've got the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean, and the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt is trying to thread itself through the Indonesian archipelago and we always had reliably strong current. Every dive I did there of probably 100, 150 dives uh, in a month was a drift dive. Every single one of them, really, really strong current. In fact, the closest I've ever come to dying on a dive was in Indonesia when I got caught up in a downwelling, a downdraft, if you will, uh, which was like being swept over an underwater waterfall. It was absolutely insane. All caused by really strong ocean currents. So let's look at how we can factor currents into our dive plan to help us stay safe. Okay, so let's say you pull up to a dive site in the open ocean on a boat. How do you know if there's current in the water or not? Well, the first and most easy way is to test the water with something that floats. So a buoy on a line, throw it in, check to see if it floats away, how fast and in what direction. Failing that, my buddy uses an old coconut that he tosses in the water, same principle. What you can't really do is use the boat's GPS to see how far you're drifting from a marked spot because the boat is also affected by windage, the wind blowing on the sides of the boat. So that could cause you to move faster or slower than the current in the water. All right, so you know there's current at the surface. How do you tell if there is current at depth? And bear in mind, guys, it may be the case that there's loads of current on the surface and nothing down below, or vice versa, no current on the surface, but really strong current at depth. One way to do is, if it's safe to get into the water, just get in with a mask and a snorkel on and just look at the behavior of the wildlife on the dive site. If you see all the fish lined up facing in the same direction, that's a good indication there's some kind of current as opposed to fish pointing all over the shop. If those fish are swimming, look at their tails. Are they propelling themselves? Are they making headway or are they swimming quite hard and not going anywhere? Sure sign that there's current. Also look at the coral. Fan corals are a great indicator of current. Are the fan corals bent over in one direction or are they kind of swaying in the breeze? If they're swaying, very little current. If they're pinned down in one direction, pretty strong current. If there are already divers in the water, another really easy way to look for current and monitor it from depth all the way to the surface is look at the diver's bubbles. Are the bubbles going straight up from where the diver exhaled or are they actually traveling up on a diagonal and surfacing several feet downstream of them. Okay, so you figured out that there is current at this dive site. How do you actually dive in current safely? Well, first off, drift diving is always preferable. See also Cozumel, see also Cancun, Palau, etc. Obviously, that is the best way to conduct a dive and a drift dive. You jump in the water, you go with the current, you get picked up downstream by your support vessel absolutely the easiest way. If a drift dive scenario isn't possible, if your boat is tied up to a fixed mooring, I strongly suggest that you listen and take the crew's advice and use their line system with the best intent. Here in South Florida, we have a dive site, the Spiegel Grove. You guys may have seen our video on it. And there are fixed mooring balls on that. And we always run a granny line, a tagline, whatever you want to call it, from the stern of the boat all the way to the mooring to the tiger tail, which is attached to the upline, which is attached to the wreck. So if you jump in the water holding that line and you follow that line all the way down until you get to the wreck, you're gonna get a wreck dive. But you'll be surprised the number of divers who are like, I don't need a line, I'm a strong swimmer. They jump in, they make a free descent and they never see the wreck. Yeah, they just drift off, that's it, gone. We gotta go pick them up. Yep, sorry everyone. You don't wanna be that guy. If you're doing an out and back dive profile where your entry and exit point will be the same, it's always best to do the first half of your dive going into the current. That way you've got the current with you when you're low on gas and you're more tired in the second half of your dive. My next piece of advice for anyone diving in strong currents is to make sure that you are equipped appropriately. There are definitely some tools and accessories you're gonna to wanna to add to your dive kit arsenal if you're planning to dive in a strong current. Number one, without a shadow of a doubt, you know it, you know it, I don't even have to say, okay, DSMB. Yes, I know, I'm a fanatic. You guys know, the regular viewers on this channel know, I'm all about the DSMB, I won't get in the water without one. I've said it before, I'll say it again. 
it is a lifesaver. Look, when you're talking about diving in current, the biggest risk is you getting blown away from the boat by the current being stronger than you can swim against and then surfacing away from the boat and the boat captain not seeing you. In which case, you would pop your bag, inflate a nice bright orange, bright yellow, bright pink, six foot sausage that you can wave in the air, attract attention and get help. But it's not just about DSMBs. You can also use, for example, a reef hook when you're diving on reefs and you wanna stay stationary in a current. This is basically a short tether, a piece of line about four feet long that has a bent hook shaped piece of metal in one end of it that you would attach to a rock. Please don't attach reef hooks to the actual coral. That would be bad, but find a patch of rock hook yourself in, make yourself eh, ever so slightly positive so you're not bouncing off of the coral itself and watch the world go by. This is a very popular tool for diving in Palau where you're out there on the blue corner and the current's ripping and you're watching scores of sharks go past and you don't wanna be working real hard to hold position. You just hook into the reef and chill. More often than not, if I'm doing a long deco stop in current and I'm on a fixed mooring line, I don't want to be waving like a flag off of the upline. So I'll use a John line to attach myself to the upline, which also creates space for other divers going up and down that line while I'm chilling and doing my decompression. John line, very similar to a reef hook, except it just has a loop on one end. You wrap it around the upline and it allows you to hold your position in the water column, complete your decompression without having to swim really hard or get your arms ripped out of the socket by the strong current. Very popular here in South Florida. And then, as I said, the risk of getting blown off of a dive is the biggest challenge when diving in strong currents. So, of course, other safety equipment you might want to consider. Signaling mirror, marker die, whistle, flares, strobes, any of that kind of stuff to draw attention in the event that you weren't able to make it back to the boat and you got swept away. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the top advice I can give you for diving in currents. I hope you're gonna enjoy this series of videos. Uh, next up, we're gonna be looking at visibility and how that can affect your dive plan. So stay tuned for that. That will be coming up in the next few weeks. I wanna say thank you again to our sponsor for this series of videos, Dive Right. Guys, please do me that favor. Head over to their social channels. All the links are in the description of this video below. Show Dive Right some love. Send them a message. Say, hey, James sent me. James sent me to you guys from Divers Ready. How are you guys doing? Thanks so much for supporting the content that he puts out. Appreciate it, guys. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something from it. Only if you learned something from it or if you found it entertaining. If you didn't like this video, give it the old thumbs down twice. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week on ocean conditions. Dive safe, dive often.